an. You'll hear someone booking transport for a trip. First, you have some time to look at questions one and two. Now we shall begin. You should answer the questions as you listen because you will not hear the recording a second time. Listen carefully and answer questions one and two. Good morning, Burnham Coaches. Sarah speaking. How can I help you? Ah, yes. Good morning. I'm a teacher at the Down Language School. We have a bit of a problem, and I was wondering if you could help us out. What is the problem exactly? Well, we normally take our students on an excursion at the end of their course. But unfortunately, the coach firm we normally use has let us down. It seems they've gone out of business. I'm sorry to hear that. I suppose you are looking for a replacement. Well, yes. We won't need a very large coach, actually. There will be 30 students and four teachers. So that's 34 in all. And what dates did you have in mind? The last Saturday and Sunday of this month. That's the 28th and 29th. The 28th and 29th. Does that mean you are planning to stay somewhere overnight? That's right. Actually, we want to do the same excursion that we do every year. We usually visit Stonehenge, Salisbury and stay overnight in Bath. It's a historical tour, really. It sounds interesting. Let me just see what we have available. Oh dear, I'm afraid all our coaches are booked out for the 28th. It's the busiest time of the year for us, actually. I was afraid that would be a problem. But you have a coach available for the 29th? Yes, we do. And it's available for the 30th as well, if that's any help to you. I'm afraid not. Sunday is the last day. The students go home on Monday. I think we'll just have to change our plans a bit and leave out Salisbury. It's a shame, but I don't think we can fit in all three places in one day. So, you would like to book the coach for the 29th, visiting Stonehenge and Bath, is that right? Yes, I think so. Before you hear the rest of the conversation, you have some time to look at questions 3 to 10. Now listen and answer questions 3 to 10. Right, I just need a few details, sir. OK. My name is Paul Scott. S-C-O-T? It's double T, actually. I'm sorry. And it's the Down Language School. Could you give me the address for that, Mr Scott? Yes, it's Down House... Hill Street, Brighton. Do you need the postcode? No, that's not necessary, but I do need a contact number. Of course. The number for the school secretary is 01273 512 634. You can contact her if you need to speak to anyone. Right, and what time would you like the coach to pick you up? Well... I think we'll have to make an early start. Would 7.30 be all right? Yes, no problem at all. What time do you want to be back? Oh, any time between 10 and 11 will be all right. Not later than 11, though. Right, I'll make a note of that. 11pm latest. There's just one more thing I need to know. Presumably, you'll be visiting Stonehenge first. How long do you want to stay there? Well. We normally stay about an hour. The main objective of the excursion is for the students to see the Georgian architecture in Bath, really. Yes, Bath is lovely, isn't it? I was there myself a couple of years ago. I thought the Royal Crescent was absolutely stunning. I hadn't realised how large it is. Well, I think that's all I need to know, Mr Scott. Thank you for booking with us. Just a minute. There's one thing you seem to have forgotten. 
How much will this cost? Oh, I'm terribly sorry. I was thinking about Bath. Just bear with me a moment. Yes, it's a round trip of 300 miles and a total time of 16 hours for the driver. For a 45-seater coach, that will be a total of £500, including tax and insurance. Do we have to have such a large coach? There are only 34 of us. We don't have any smaller coaches, I'm afraid. Oh, well. At least we won't be cramped for space. When do we have to pay? We require a 20% deposit to confirm the booking. I suggest that you do that as soon as possible, today if you can. The balance you can give to the driver if you're paying by cheque. Have the cheque made out to Burnham Coaches. I think that'll be all right. I will have to check this with the school accountant, but if all is well, I'll arrange for someone to bring you the deposit within the next two hours. That'll be fine, Mr Scott. Well, thank you very much indeed. Goodbye. Goodbye. That is the end of part one. You now have half a minute to check your answers. Now it turns to part two. Part two. You will hear the overseas student officer talking to some new students about the arrangements for an excursion to Ironbridge. First, you have some time to look at questions 11 to 15. Now, listen carefully and answer questions 11 to 15. Hello everyone. My name is Pamela Sutcliffe and most of you already know that I'm the Overseas Student Officer here at Salopian Technical College. Next Tuesday, the 28th of September, we have arranged an excursion for all new students to the important historical town of Ironbridge. We are hoping you'll all come because not only is the history of Ironbridge very important and interesting, but also an excursion like this is a relaxed and fun way to get to know each other. Ironbridge is about 55 kilometres from here and we'll be travelling by the college bus, which holds 40 people. If there are more than that, we'll bring a couple of staff cars as well, though I might ask you to indicate on the list if you have a car and would be willing to take a couple of passengers. The list I'm referring to is up there on the student notice board, and if you would like to come on Tuesday, would you please add your name as soon as possible. By the way, could you please print your name clearly? I know some people have wonderful signatures, but often I'm afraid I can't read them, which can cause problems. So if we need extra transport and you could bring your car, can you tick the car column next to your name? Could you also add your student number and your telephone number? just in case there are any last-minute changes and we have to contact you. The other information I need to give you is about lunch. There's a very nice little restaurant in Ironbridge which gives a 15% discount to the college when we bring groups. That means lunch is only about £4 and they do good vegetarian meals too, so it's usually no problem for those of you on special diets. But if you prefer to eat your own food, that's fine too, either on the bus or in the park. But I'd encourage you to try the restaurant. Now talking of costs, 
I should tell you that the bus will only cost you ten pounds, and if you bring your car, we'll pay for the petrol. So you get a free trip in return for driving there. Will you please sign up by Saturday at six p.m. at the latest? The list is closed after that. We will depart at nine thirty a.m. sharp on Tuesday morning, so please make sure that you arrive at least fifteen minutes before, so that you can find a seat and get settled on the bus. Before you hear the rest of the talk, you have some time to look at questions sixteen to twenty. Now listen and answer questions sixteen to twenty. The college bus garage is behind the engineering workshop. It's quite easy to find. If you come here to the student union building, then walk east down the avenue until you get to the childcare centre on your left, and then turn left. And walk past the sports centre and the tennis courts, which are both on your left. Cross over Central Square, and opposite you is the engineering workshop. Walk around the back, and you'll see the bus. Please wear comfortable shoes, as we'll be walking around Ironbridge and be on our feet for most of the day. Wear a warm jacket. And you might like to bring an umbrella and a backpack to put them in if the weather's warm and sunny, which we hope it will be. But of course, we can't guarantee that. Certainly, bring your cameras and any snacks or drinks for the bus journey there and back, which should take about an hour and a half each way. You should all check the notice board on Monday, and we'll also put a note in your mailbox to confirm arrangements. So don't forget to check it. Now, why are we visiting Ironbridge? Well, Ironbridge, as the name suggests, has got the original iron bridge. That is the first ever iron bridge in the world. It was the birthplace of the Industrial Revolution, and for forty years it led the world. As Britain changed from an agricultural society into an industrial one, it's hard to imagine today that this pretty, sleepy little tourist town was one of the most important places in England for over a century. Just imagine, two hundred years ago, people from all over Europe and even North America came to Ironbridge to learn about what was then the latest technology. Today, it is listed as a World Heritage Site by the United Nations, as they consider the unique collection of industrial monuments, ranked alongside the Grand Canyon, the pyramids, and the Great Barrier Reef. One place that's fun to visit is Blist Hill, which is a reconstruction of a small Victorian industrial town where people are working and living as they did a hundred years ago. I hope you'll enjoy the day. It's been a very popular excursion in previous years, so I'm looking forward to going again next Tuesday. Now, don't forget to put your name on the list as soon as possible. That is the end of part two. You now have half a minute to check your answers. Now it turns to part three. Part three. You will hear a parent discussing his son's school report with his tutor. Listen and fill in the missing information in the report below. First, you have some time to look at questions twenty-one to twenty-six.
Now listen carefully and answer questions 21 to 26. Good evening, Mr. Jameson. Please sit down. Uh, good evening. Uh, now, about my son Stephen's report. Yes, just a minute. Yes, now, what class is he in? Oh, yes, 4E. No, 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 4A, isn't it? Yes, that's right. Has he improved this year, Mrs. Hargreaves? Yes, I think overall, yes. Mind you, there is still room for more improvement in some subjects. Let's see. Maths. Well, the major problem here seems to be his algebra. Apart from that, he's doing much better. Could you help him with this, Mr. Jameson? Well, to be honest, it wasn't really my best subject at school either. But the overall exam result was encouraging. 60%. Yes, and history... I seem to remember a bad report for this last year. Well, he lacks concentration in the class, and of course this makes it difficult to remember things like dates and names, and a memory is quite useful in a subject like this. Oh dear. Well, I'll have a word with him when I get home and see what we can do to improve that. And music. Music, yes. Is he still having guitar lessons? Yes, every Monday after school. His music teacher has commented that he doesn't seem to be taking them very seriously. I think it was just a craze he had, Mrs Hargreaves. I've noticed that he hasn't been very interested in practising at home. And also, he tends to talk a lot in class. I mean, he's very talkative. And he only got 40% in the exam. Well, nobody in our family is very musical, so I don't expect him to do very well. Before you hear the rest of the talk, you have some time to look at questions 27 to 30. Now listen and answer questions 27 to 30. Looking at his geography result, though, there has been considerable improvement, 64%. Yes, I remember him working at home a lot for some sort of project or something on... Uh, now, where was it? India, I think. No, uh, on China. Yes, yes. And it was an excellent piece of work. I saw it myself and was very impressed. And his art classes have also been going better this year. Yes, he became very interested in pop art after the school and went to the local art gallery to see the pictures there. His bedroom wall is covered with posters from the shop. Yes, and 58% is not bad for his exam result, considering how low it was last year. And now French. It seems that he has really taken to speaking a foreign language. We hoped he would, because it's important to know another language these days, isn't it? Yes, quite. That's why we paid for him to go to France last Easter, so he could practice more. Well, it seems to have done the trick. 80% is a very good mark. Now, Mrs Hargreaves, I'd just like to ask you one more thing about... That is the end of part three. You now have half a minute to check your answers. Now it turns to part four. Part 4. You will hear a postgraduate psychology student talking to other students about a job satisfaction study he has investigated. Before you listen, you have some time to look at questions 31 to 40.
Now listen and answer questions 31 to 40. Good morning, everyone. For my presentation today, I'm going to report on an assignment that I did recently. My brief was to analyze the methods used in a small study about job satisfaction and then to make recommendations for future studies of a similar kind. The study that I looked at had investigated the relationship between differences in gender and differences in working hours and levels of job satisfaction amongst workers. For this purpose, employees at a call center had been asked to complete a questionnaire about their work. I'll summarize the findings of that study briefly now. First of all, female full-time workers reported slightly higher levels of job satisfaction than male full-time workers. Secondly, female part-time workers reported slightly higher levels of satisfaction than female full-time ones did. On the other hand, male part-time workers experienced slightly less job satisfaction than male full-time workers. But although these results seemed interesting and capable of being explained, perhaps the most important thing to mention here is that in statistical terms, they were inconclusive. Personally, I was surprised that the findings hadn't been more definite because I would have expected to find that men and women, as well as full and part-time workers, would experience different levels of satisfaction. So I then looked more carefully at the methodology employed by the researchers to see where there may have been problems. This is what I found. First of all, the size of the sample was probably too small. The overall total of workers who took part in the survey was 223, which sounds quite a lot, but they had to be divided up into subgroups. Also, the numbers in the different subgroups were unequal. For example, there were 154 workers in the full-time group, but only 69 in the part-time group. And amongst this part-time group, only 10 were male, compared to 59 who were female. Secondly, although quite a large number of people had been asked to take part in the survey, the response was disappointingly low. A lot of them just ignored the invitation. And workers who did respond may have differed in important respects from those who didn't. Thirdly, as the questionnaires had been posted to the call center for distribution, the researchers had had very limited control over the conditions in which participants completed them. For instance, their responses to questions may have been influenced by the views of their colleagues. All these problems may have biased the results. In the last part of my assignment, I made recommendations for a similar study, attempting to remove the problems that I've just mentioned. Firstly, a much larger sample should be targeted, and care should be taken to ensure that equal numbers of both genders and both full- and part-time workers are surveyed. Secondly, the researchers should ensure that they are present to administer the questionnaires to the workers themselves. And should they require the workers to complete the questionnaire under supervised conditions so that the possibility of influence from other colleagues is eliminated? Finally, as workers may be unwilling to provide details of their job satisfaction when they are on work premises, it's important that the researchers reassure them that their responses will remain confidential and also that they have the right to withdraw from the study at any time if they want to. By taking measures like these, the reliability of the responses to the questionnaires is likely to be increased, and any comparisons that are made are likely to be more valid. So, that was a summary of my assignment. Does anyone have any questions? That is the end of part four. You now have half a minute to check your answers.